name is Brittany Morrison and today we're going to be talking about vocal techniques and how to have an A plus voice lesson. This can apply to your first ever voice lesson you're going to be teaching or you can just keep this in mind if you're going to be a student. Hopefully it can just be a guide to any level singer. So let's get started. So first let's talk about posture. So our posture is super important when we sing. We really want to try to avoid slouching or hunching over. Crossing our arms also is not great because it constricts our breathing. We want to have a really tall spine, standing up straight, shoulders back. And we want our chin pointing upwards, just like we're a puppet on a string. And we want our feet to be shoulder width apart with our dominant foot slightly in front of the other, just to have a little extra stability. So posture is an essential part of any activity involving singing. And this is because you want your body to feel safe and comfortable and secure so that you don't really have to think about it. If you're wobbling and swaying and feeling comfortable on your feet, you're not gonna be able to focus on your voice and your technique and your breathing and all of the other million things that you need to be thinking about that actually have to do with your voice. Having good posture just helps you feel secure in your body so that you can think about the things that really matter. So the next thing we really want to establish is a good breathing technique. Any musician whose instrument requires breathing can tell you that breathing is the most important thing. If you can't feel secure in your breathing, then you're not gonna be able to really focus on making something beautiful with musicality and dynamics and phrasing because you're gonna be focused on surviving because you can't breathe. <laughs> so that being said, as singers, we require even more breathing. It's all about our diaphragm and our voices and our instrument is our physicality. So some exercises we can do to really engage that diaphragm, that core, where our breathing comes from are dog pants. Those look like this. So every time you breathe in, you're engaging that core. You can also do in for four, hold for four, and out for however long your student is capable. We can just do in for four, hold for four, out for 16. So that requires a lot of core strength to get through a 16 bar exhale. So doing those two exercises can really help engage the core at the beginning of a lesson just so we get our body aware of what it's about to be doing. Just a couple other extra things, maybe recommend running as an exercise or really any sport, but running specifically because you really have to learn how to control and maintain that breath so that you can feel secure in your pacing and feel like you're not dying while you're running. And lastly, we can just use a visual aid like a beach ball. So just thinking about our diaphragm as a beach ball and just expanding the beach ball as far as we can when we're breathing in and then deflating it all the way down when we exhale. The next thing we're going to talk about is our tone. So the voice is a very dynamic instrument. It has the capability to do so many different things and it's amazing if you know how to use it correctly and you know how to get certain sounds. So just like the great composers of the past, like Beethoven, Mozart, they used different instruments to get different colors, tones, and textures in their symphonies. The voice has the capacity to do something similar. To begin with tone, we would start with talking about resonance. A quick little introduction to resonance would just be doing a yawn. Okay, so this yawn space we're really, really open and big in the back of our throats. That's our high soft palate. That sounds a little silly, but we wanna have that sound 
when we're trying to achieve a really resonant sound. So we want that really high soft palate like a yawn. Oh, oh. We can just introduce our students to that yawn space and really encourage them to lean into that. Another thing is we want to have a relaxed tongue position. So if your tongue is super tense, you're not going to be able to achieve that really high soft palate, big resonant sound because your tongue is going to be compressing that space and just any tension in your body in general, but especially in this area, in the throat, in the mouth area, is really not good for singing. So we just want to have a relaxed forward tongue touching the front of your teeth, typically. That's what you want. And really, we just want to encourage a free, open sound. We don't want to force anything. We don't want to be pushing anything. And lastly, just thinking about colors in our voice based on the brightness or the darkness. We can also have straight tones or really big vibratos. We can think as soloists or we can think as ensemble members. So all of these things are things we could be thinking about in our voice lessons to give more context to how our voice is going to be working in relation to our experiences performing and singing different kinds of music. So the last thing we want to talk about is just how to introduce warm-ups actual vocal warm-ups into a lesson. We can do the sirens. You're just gonna go all the way up and down through the range, maybe do some turns. Just doing a couple turns at the top. You can do turns at the bottom. You can start from the bottom, start from the top. So this helps obviously warm up the voice, get the vocal cords going in every part of the range possible. So the next kind of warm up we would want to do is something for flexibility, doing something that involves some kind of run. Something like that, where we're going up and down really quickly for the voice to become more agile. Something with dynamics, just so we can introduce the voice to these different feelings that the different volumes bring. And hopefully knowing that will make them more accessible when the time comes to actually use them in a piece of music. Some other genres for warm-ups are ones that engage our diction skills. Mommy made me mash my M&M's. Mommy made me mash my M&M's. So you really have to get all those words wrapped around your tongue, your teeth, and your lips all at the same time and have a beautiful tone. So it really requires a lot from the singer. And it really practices the diction, which is essential to all singers because the words are really how we communicate to an audience. So just a general thing that we want to think about while we're doing vocal warm-ups is just working on balancing, blending, and range and register consistency. So keeping this in mind, doing any of these warm-ups that we just talked about, it would really help guide the warm-up process. So those are just a few essential things that you might want to keep in mind if you're going to be a voice teacher or if you're going to be a voice student. Just really focusing on as many of these things as you can and just doing your best and really appreciating the ability to sing and express yourself in this way because it really is special to connect with other human beings on a level so intimate as through the voice. Enjoy singing!